happens to run to the doctor every time something squeak. It wasn't but 40, 50 years ago in my lifetime, all the old timers, they, all they knew what to do was pray. They might use a little remedy or this or that, get something, put the ball in the pot and get you to drink it, or whatever, hand you a spoon, do something. But they didn't, didn't run to the hospital. They didn't have no insurance. Yeah. I'm talking about my grandparents and my parents. My parents didn't have no insurance. We the most covered insurance. Well, I don't even think they had auto insurance. I don't know when the fuck they started getting auto insurance. It's been all in my life. But we got so much insurance, but we don't believe in no healing. Every sickness and every disease known to the people is curable through the power of the Holy Ghost. Cancer, AIDS. When AIDS came out, the church went through another weak spell. We confess more than anybody. AIDS is incurable. How in the world can a holy God who died for every disease leave one that couldn't be cured? We bought into that so big, just like COVID, people died by the millions. You know why they died? <laughs> You know why they died by the millions? Because the enemy again had attacked the church in its thinking, in its doctrine. The people didn't want to pray, but they wanted to judge the homosexuals because that's where it supposedly it started and spread to the heterosexual community. And as soon as you got AIDS, man, they ichabobbed you. Ichabob means the glory of the Lord has departed from you. I mean, God done with you. And it was the church who was the salt who had lost his savor. Start saying. That's why the homosexuals, we accept LGBTQ plus right now and just pretty much let, you know, go, go for it. But I hope you come, start coming to church. For what? My testimony, and I'm not ashamed of it because I, I, God delivered me from drugs and brought me in because that's what I was doing. But I needed something more than shine on me, and that's my testimony. And that's why I didn't come. Even though my parents, my father, grandparents was preachers and all that, they religion. They wasn't, they wasn't doing the Holy Ghost back then. Some of them did. But God knew I needed something to, com to compete with them drugs and them women. That was my testimony. And I ain't, I ain't ashamed to say it. Drugs and, 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 and the party. And if you think I'm going to come sit up in here, and just set up in here and watch a bunch of people, and they ain't had no power. And God, he told me this later. I didn't know that. He said, the reason I had to feel you like I felt filled you is because you couldn't just come in and sit down and just they going to sit there and fumble around. You had done, been in, in something, a spirit had got you, you to another realm that wasn't gonna, you wasn't going to be terrible up in that place. Yeah. And we wonder why. The loss of every age can't be reached is because we, the church, we like power. We're full of religion. And we still sing and shine on me, but we're singing it in a different key and a little bit up tempo. But we're doing everything the world do. And when we leave church, we act just like they did. And we got silver and gold. But he says, such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And we're waiting on the one man or the one man to have power. But all of us are supposed to have power. And somewhere in your walk, you're going to have to meet Jesus on the road. Young people, old people. Get a, get a heart for God and cast out a devil. Cast out a devil out your girlfriend. Yeah. Cast out a devil out your mama. Cast out a devil out your daddy. Cast out a devil out your cousin. Yeah. Quit.
Quit waiting on Sunday morning. Sunday morning ain't going to come. Don't you know that people change their mind from Friday night to Sunday morning? You know how many people I'd admit I'm coming to church on Sunday, and Sunday you go looking for them, you knocking on their door like a fool. They won't answer. You see the curtain move a little bit. They in there, but they ain't coming. That devil and got back in the bed with them, got them in there. They didn't cut the TV down. You know that's the biggest trick of the enemy. You know you got to baptize them on Thursday night when you find them. Hey, man, I done done that plenty of times. You know you got to put your hands on them right there. You take them in the bathroom and be quiet when people come in and lay hands on them in a stall. Don't you know you got to take them in the room somewhere by yourself? That's what he's talking about. Don't you know you got to call them and say, let's shut up talking about the preacher and let's pray right now about you and me? Don't you know you got, you got to do it? Don't you know you got to, as a young person, you got to go and pray for somebody in the gym class for them right now because somebody talking about them? When he said he's going to pour his spirit out on his young men and young women, he didn't say so they can come to the upper room on Sunday morning. Bless my heart, a guy I used to go hunting with. And I never did understand why every time we go hunting, both of us got trucks. He want to ride his truck, and I drive my truck. Well, he, one day he told me, this has been about 15, 20 years ago, about 20 years ago. But I seen him, like, last year. But he, he, he didn't want to offend me. He always, his, his brothers them smoke crack. And he said that was too serious a drug for him because they was always fighting with one another. He said, man, they was too serious for him. But he smoked weed all the time. And he always drive his truck. I'm driving my truck. We driving two hours north to go hunting. We get done hunting. He driving two hours back. We following each other. So, you know, one day he told me, he said, well, man, you know, I don't want to offend you and all that. I said, okay, that's cool. But I seen him at the gas station here about a year ago, and he said he just came up to me. I hadn't seen him in years. He said, Steve. Man, let me tell you something, man. He said, man, I'm going to tell you something. I ain't never told you this, Steve. But you know what, man? You was a blessing to me, man. I ain't never told you this, man. But he said, but you know, every time we went hunting, he said, you never would hunt, man, unless we prayed. He said, Steve, I ain't never forgot that. He said, every time we get out and get ready to go hunting, man, you would pray. He said, I ain't never had nobody to do that. You know, that blessed me because I hadn't realized it, but I never would hunt. Unless we got out, you know, dogs running around. I had dogs, let the dogs run in. I would always, let's pray. Cause I didn't want to get shot, you know. So I'm like, let's pray. Lord bless us and help us. I wasn't praying to get no, no game. I was praying safety. <laughs> I didn't want to die out in no field. Some fool shoot me. And, but he brought, he brought that back to me. And I thought, my God, Lord, you can use the littlest thing. Because that wasn't no big deal to me. But it was to him. He gave you the Holy Ghost to be a witness in the grocery store. There's three sins of Israel, and there's three sins of the modern church. Let's look. <coughs> there's three sins that Israel did, and there's three sins of the, of the, mighty, of the modern church in Acts chapter 3, verse 14. But you denied the Holy One and the just. That's what Israel did, and that's what we're doing now, denying the Holy One. We're walking around here saying we're Christians and we're not holy. Unholy living. Unholy conversation. That's what Israel did. And, we, and desire the murder to be granted unto you. We would rather have the devil than God. A murderer, a liar. It's okay that I can lie to my parents, lie to my spouse, lie about others, murder with my tongue. I told you the time God told me I was a murderer because I was mad at the man, but you can murder people with your mouth. So we desire him. And then it says, and kill the prince of life whom God raised. We killed Jesus. That's what Israel did. And that's what, the, why we, we don't experience Pentecostal power. Pentecost ain't a church. It's power. The secret of power with God and divine miracles 
Acts 3.16. Here it is. Here's the secret. And his name through faith in his name have made this man strong. We don't have any faith in his name. That's why we're so weak. Faith in his name for our sickness. We've got faith in his name for our medicine. And his name, through faith in his name, have made this man strong. Faith in his name. We got to almost beat you up to say Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. People whispering. It's like the devil. Satan has got your tongue. Young people, old people, you say you're going to heaven, but you say Jesus is almost like, well, I'm not feeling that. You're supposed to say Jesus like you would say Michael if you was in Michael's deal. You wouldn't have a problem if you was if Michael hollering Michael and scream. Some, 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 you know, some, if, you, if you went to see a pop star in the days you did, Luther, if you did whoever, you wouldn't have a problem screaming. God is jealous. Some of y'all did it. You still haven't call on God like you call on somebody. Some, 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 some of you have a love for a secular artist way more than you, ha- you love God. And in your life, you have called on them. You know, some of them new girls that sing, them young girls, you, oh, I love some, oh, Mickey Minaj, Mickey Minaj. You ain't never said, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. You ain't never done that. And God is jealous. But it says in his name, through faith in his name. You know how many believe we don't have faith in his name no more? You're supposed to have faith in his name when depression comes. Faith in his name when you have suicidal thoughts. Faith in his name. Those things come when depression comes. You think because we're saved that we we expended from that? Depression comes. You're supposed to say, get away from me, depression, in the name of Jesus. Faith in his name when discouragement comes. Faith in his name when doubt comes. Hey, when they're talking about you, you're supposed to say, Lord, they're talking about me. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to be okay. When you, when, when you don't have any food, when you don't have your needs, faith in his name. But we will do everything but call on his name. I'm just trying to tell you. Whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him have given this perfect soundness in the presence of... That's the reason we don't have perfect soundness. We believe in our jobs. We believe in the, our, our insurance. But if you want to have power, you better learn his name. His name is Jesus. The Holy Spirit in Peter defends the power of the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4. Today is the day of Pentecost. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them... You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by that what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and by the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which the builders rejected, which has become the head of the corner. We have rejected the stone, which is Jesus, in our churches. Neither is there salvation in any other. Ain't no salvation in the singing. Ain't no salvation in the preaching. The salvation is in the name of Jesus. If we want the preaching to work, we got to preach and teach and talk about Jesus. Amen. There's ain't no salvation in the doctor. Ain't no salvation in love. Ain't no salvation in relationships. Ain't no salvation in your mama. It ain't in your daddy. It ain't in fellowship. There's no salvation in church. Yeah. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We're here for Jesus. Yeah. All the other stuff is just fluff. Right. And we're here to hear about him so we can go. Yeah. You ain't supposed to get comfortable in the upper room. The only opinion you ought to have in the upper room is that uh, I hope I can get a good seat to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying so I can go. 
You wasn't supposed to come to the upper room and dig in. And that's all you do. Go from the upper room to your house. Upper room to your house. Upper room to your house. And now your whole life is about what goes on in the upper room. Your whole Christian experience, rather. In the meantime, you're supposed to be using the name of Jesus outside of the upper room. Laying hands on the sick. Prayer for power to preach and confirm the gospel. And now behold, Lord, their threatenings. This is what you, we should be praying on one accord. Lord, look at all the threatenings. Look at how they're talking about us. Because if one of us in any house looks stupid, all of us look stupid. Look at how they're threatening. Who's threatening? The enemy is threatening. Grant unto thy servants. Why? Because I am part of that. Jesus says either you gather with me or you scatter. Ain't no in between. So when you talk about your mama, you're talking about your house. When you talk about your church house, you're talking about your house. you either part of it. Are you a problem in it? You either for it or you're against it. Ain't no middle ground. When you go to your physical house, you either for that house or you against it. Ain't no I'm just here at the house. You because if everything you do from the trash to get picking the gum off the floor, picking the paper off the floor, mopping the floor. Flesh in the toilet, all of it helps for the upkeep of the house. You can't go in there with no attitude. I'm not going to get the crumbs off the counter because everything is connected to something. Ants is connected to the crumbs. Odors is connected to the toilet. Unmade bed is connected to something too. Lights on is connected to your pocketbook. And it's the same in a church. But you're only in the upper room for one reason. is to hear from the Holy Ghost something that you can download so you can go. You ain't here, my God, to create a little desk and a, and a portfolio and pictures of your mama and your family and all that and a cubicle. It ain't, and you ain't got no cubicle in the upper room. That's the problem with most people. They want to come in, and they got that little space, and don't come into my territory in the upper room. This mine. God gave me this. Don't come in. Don't bother. Leave it alone. Don't tell me what to do with it, because it's mine. This is what he gave me. I ain't going nowhere, because this is what. Who gave you that? Yeah. Everything he told us to do is going. I don't care if you're running 5,000 members. There's still 3 million in your city that need you to get them 5,000 and go. That's why God shook the whole thing, including those that was meeting in Coliseums. God trying to say, I took 3 million across the desert. Don't you think I'm impressed with your 10,000 in the Coliseum? I shut that down too. Because that's how big I am. All them people need to be saved. I'm trying to give you a picture of where the problem is. Everybody dug in, entrenched, this mine. And God is saying, I got 10 million people that don't know their left hand from their right hand. And if you look in the mirror, and you be honest like the preacher has to do. You need to start saying, I'm part of the problem or I'm part of the solution. Yeah. Instead of pointing at each other yeah. and everybody, say, I'm part of the problem. Yeah. Or either I'm part of the solution. Because when you're pointing at everybody else, yeah. you really pointing at you. You the problem. Yeah. Because if they get more people like you 
pointing at everybody, we in a dangerous place. So, give your servants boldness so we can speak your word. Where? On the job. To my neighbor, but I got to bake biscuits. In the seventh hour class. To my drunk cousin. To my old girlfriend who can't weld her knees together. To my friend who think he Johnny Mac, Mac Daddy. Give me boldness. Because you ain't going to say nothing up in here. Because you scared each other. But give me boldness. Holler at my kid. Give me boldness. When I see somebody on the corner, mama with two kids, and I can look at the clothes and tell they ain't washed. Say, you need some help? Yeah. Give me boldness when I hand somebody a dollar and say, do you know Jesus? Because yeah. anybody can drive their car to church and sit here yeah. and holler about the upper room. Yeah. But give me boldness to speak your word yeah. to my sick cousin. God will heal you. Give me boldness to lay hands on somebody because you know how shy I am. That's what they did. Why? Because they threatening us. The enemy is threatening us. And then, Lord, heal with signs and wonders so the name of your holy child, Jesus, can be exalted. I ain't got to invite nobody to church. All you need to do is give me boldness. I sat there eight hours with Becky. Give me boldness. I know who she's sleeping with. And I just, girl, you kidding. Man, you kidding. You kidding. Give me boldness. To say something without judging. Just like... Pastor prayed for that man out there. He remembered it. So maybe if I just plant the seed. Get it out of my mind. They got to come to church with me on Sunday. Give me boldness at the gas station. Give me boldness next time somebody say, I'm pretty. Me quit taking it and say, thank you. I hope they ask me out. God's answer to their prayer. When they had prayed, the place was shaken, and where they were assembled, the Holy Spirit filled. See, the Holy Ghost will fill us when we ask for boldness to do what he wants us to do. We want boldness so we can sing the song in front of everybody. Give me boldness so when I sing the song, they be blessed. The Holy Ghost said, you don't want boldness for that, so you can be seen. Give me boldness so when I preach, they'll hear me. You don't preach in front of the upper room. I give you the Holy Ghost so you go outside the church. You can have some ideas. You go sing. Give me boldness to sing on the corner. That me and a few of us can go. Give me boldness that just like we talk on the phone, feel why we got to have the preacher got to say, okay, we going witness. Ain't you got the Holy Ghost? Y'all talk about going eating together. He ain't never told two or three y'all go stand on the corner. He ain't never told two or three y'all to go over to a nursing home. What kind of Holy Ghost people got today? You got to browbeat them, make them feel like they're going to hell. The preacher got to do it. He 90 years old, can barely get in and out of the car. He on a wheelchair and stretcher. He ain't done it, but then you can't go. You young people can't go. Y'all can rip and run, but y'all feet don't ever. Y'all can't go. What kind of Holy Ghost is that? Yeah. Young men can jump out of the gym and slam, slam dunk, but they go to Holy Ghost, your feet hurt, your corn, your bunion hurt. Y'all yeah. can dance. He don't ever tell y'all, some of y'all, Get together and go over there and knock on the door in that neighborhood. Give me boldness to go in them projects across the street from me. Give me boldness to go in my neighborhood. But you will talk about your church, but you ain't got boldness to go in your own neighborhood. 
You got boldness to talk about your preacher, but you ain't got boldness to go in your own neighborhood. You pay rent, but you won't go in your own neighborhood. Drive past your neighbors, but you won't go in your own. Give me boldness to go in my own neighborhood. Yeah. Set up a lemonade stand. Then God will give you some boldness. Yeah. You got boldness to talk about the church program, but you ain't got boldness to go two doors from the house. Good. So what kind of Holy Ghost is that? Yeah. Yeah. The early church had power because they went out of the upper room. God ain't giving no power to some people that ain't going to ever lead the upper room. Our attitude is I'm going, I'm stuck to that seat. Some of y'all ain't going to ever move from the seat you've been sitting in. Yeah. Care what church you go to. Going to sit in that seat. And that seat and the seat in your car. And that Holy Spirit can't get you to move. But you will go to church and think you done God a favor. You better wake up, Amen. get some oil in your lamp. Because the Holy Ghost I know will wake you up in the morning and tell you to pray and also tell you, you better not let your work be undone. Y'all don't want to hear nothing. I'm about done. I'm about done. I'm about done. I know y'all say, I hope you are too, preacher. <laughs> Acts 5 and 12 is saying, By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders 